Okay, I think this is where we and stopped the last time, and we created an empty or template uh, single file component or view app with single file components. And the goal next is to um, kind of refactor the front end of the patch store or patch shot and using the file. And so we're going to turn the patch store and into three parts or three components. And the header will be in the root component, which is called app and view. Uh, let me start the code anyway, so you can see better. Uh, demo. Okay, um, is the text in the code, if you see the code big enough? Slightly bigger, sir, if it's possible. Okay, has to be even bigger. And um, okay now, or? Perfect. And um, Hopefully you can see at least, okay. So, and um, this was the, the demo and um, is the app we created the last time. Uh, we, oh, sorry. We, and the app we created from the CRI last time is in the pet store folder. So these are the things, everything inside and some, these, most of these files are generated automatically and by the view CRI. And the part we are mostly concerned about or we will be editing will be inside the source. And so the app.view will be the, the main file. And that's what we're going to be editing. I'm going to have a look at the code a little bit later on. And the things we're going to use, we'll create the components and put inside uh, the components folder. So again, the hello world is the one that created and by default. Uh, so I believe to run this and you just do, ah, okay, and MPN run, sir. No, not here. Um, okay, I have to see the week 18. CD demo, LS, pet store. Okay, and I think uh, to start the whole app now and just run MPN run serve, I believe. We start to build and this is the URL. Okay, and so that's what it looks like so far. So this is the default page. And we're going to take everything out and then put in our own code in this. So we're going to use, we're not going to say change the structure. We're going to just say either rename or replace the content in the files. And for app.view, we will just keep as it is and probably not even changing the name. And it says currently it takes only one component, which is called Hello World, and that was imported from dot compo slash component slash Hello World. So that means it's get from uh, this one here. Uh, so that's components and dot Hello World. That's where you get the file. And uh, in terms of the actual template, and it doesn't really do much yet. It has a template. And it has an image, and which is 
this view logo you see here, you have a hello world component. That's what you imported and which displays everything below here. Okay, and uh, so we're gonna still use the app.view view to hold, put the headers of our per store. And we're gonna create a product list component it's listing all the products we have. And a form component um, for the checkout forms. Okay. Uh, in the practice, okay, we're gonna delete the hello.word view. So we're not gonna use that file. And uh, we're going to create um, two new files, products.view and form.view. So these are the two components we're going to use. And then we need to import this and um, into the app.view, which is shown here, just as we would have imported and hello world.view. Mm. Okay, and so this is the old uh, file, I believe. Uh, okay, so we're gonna working on the app dot view first. And so obviously we're gonna take out some of these things. So we don't need the pictures and we're not using an hello.world component either. And we're gonna import something very soon. And, but for now, uh, we not really need to import anything yet. Um, so don't have components and probably take out all the styles as well. Okay, and what we can do is, for example, we can start adding these parts, like the header. So header, Ooh. And then we have this an um, H1 and it will take side name and then for that we need ah oh, why did I get header here? Uh, components. Okay, uh, we need a little bit of data now, just to provide the site name. Uh, I have to use return data now as a function. It's a bit, a bit diff different than before. Uh, okay, my pet store. Okay, and uh, if we switch back here, header is defined but never used. Uh... So line 10. What is happening? Ah, so, so this I think is, huh? gets automatically added. Is not I didn't even write this code. Ah, okay. It doesn't like this one either. How to close the H one? Okay. So that's what we have so far. So it's working now. If I show the 
Uh, there's nothing here. If I turn on the developer tools, I'll put it onto the right. Make it a bit bigger. Okay, and um, so currently there's no errors, so that's a good thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, and we might add the button as well. That's the button we had from before. So we click. And that's used to switch between the two components. Uh, this uh, is showing here is the amount of things you have. Check out. Okay, and to do this, then we need to add the cart as one of the and we need a method as well and the particular method we need is show checkout oh. currently I'll just leave it empty and then oh, we're starting to have some errors now. Okay, I think that should be. Let's clean this. I refresh. Okay, show checkout is not defined. Ah, uh, of course. Uh, methods. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine now. So we add our button. And currently this is empty, but I will have the button here now. That's what we did before. Okay, uh, let's see, had a name, had date, had the message. Okay, and that's all fine. I think we'll just start, stop there for now. We're gonna add more later. Okay, and the next one is the product uh, list dot component. And so this is where you show the list of the products. Okay, and the code itself, and we don't really have to change much at all. Um, in terms we can more or less use this straight away. We just need to create a separate file for this. Okay. So we're gonna create a new file uh, inside the components folder. Currently, we're gonna create a new file and this is gonna call the uh, product uh, list.view. So that's a view file. Um, so we need the template part. Uh, which would be just oops. Oh, oh, scripts. Yeah, okay. Apologies. And then we need the template part and just save me a little bit of time. I'm gonna just copy and paste this one now. And I think you should all familiar. So the main part is here, which create a list using V4 and obviously needs a product that needs to be defined in the um, script part. And this is just to say, now it's kind of required by the view. So you need to define the key value to some of thing. So here I'm binding to the ID property of the product. And then here you just using the data attributes from the product, the title and the image, and description, price, available stock. And then this is probably more interesting. This is the part where you click. 
um, so you have a button that allows you to add the product to the cart. Okay, and for this one, we'll probably just simplify it. We're going to remove the uh, picture and the description and just shows the um, price and available stock and then the button allows you to add the cart. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's the template part of the product list. And then we come to the script part. Yeah, and export default, so that gives this a name to product list. And then we need some data, which is the attributes we're going to use. Again, we're doing return now because this is a function, everything. OK. Uh, so again, so here, I'm just hard code the info product information here. In your case, you probably want to retrieve the products from, say, your Heroku server using the back end. Right? And so I just do just typing something quickly. Uh, yeah. I need a title, which it's is be called cat food. Sorry, was that? Um, so for us, do we use fetch or we have fetch? Yeah. Get no, you yeah. just use whatever you currently have. We don't have to change anything. You probably uh, would have something called uh, and created. I think it's called created. That's the default one you can have. And which of your function and inside the function, you will have fetch and every other code. But you just yes. use whatever you currently have. All right. And here, I'm not going to connect to any database. I'm just going to load the data locally. So I need something. Uh, title. We also need price. Let's call it 10. And finally, we need available infantry. Let's say five. Okay, so now I at least have the products defined, only one, and then should be able to display. I still need to this, gonna add that a little bit later on. That's a method. And uh, I'm gonna, this one is called an add to cart. Okay, and currently it's just still empty. Okay, um, if I come back here, if I refresh, well, ah, yes, yes, of course. Uh, so currently we created this component, but we haven't registered that in the parent component or use it. So it's not going to change our app itself yet. Uh, let's add this to here. So we come back here. Uh, now we're going to import. Okay, let's reuse. We're going to import product list. And from product list dot view. Okay, and then in the components, they're going to register this. Obviously, it's not going to code hello world. It's got the product list. Okay. And finally, we're going to use this one here. Uh, so it's not going to be in the header. That will be the button and the name. I'm going to just use this one here. Just call the product list. Can't remember if this would work. 
and we have some errors here now. Product is not defined, but is defined, but never used in product list. It says line 20. Ah, okay. So it doesn't like this one. Okay, so you have to use it somehow. Okay, so I can do this. Ah, okay, now it's happy. So if we just define the fun parameter, not using it, it's not happy. Now we can see it's running fine now. Uh, the main app dot view and um, is using the product list component, and this is the part which is a product component. And what it does is it displays the title, uh, the price, and then available infantry, and then add a button. So currently, if I add, click this button, and it only out, output the ID of the product being added. And um, so you can actually, ah, oh, I'm not sure if we can do this. No, it does not recognize cart. So every time you click, it will add one to the, it's supposed to add one to the shopping cart, which, but we haven't done that part yet. So far, it just do a console log, which output something to the uh, console. Okay, and let's get back to the slides. Ah, okay. And this is the part about, um, if you want to including a picture for you. So, and um, previously, this is just included without any pass. Uh, if we look at this one here, so when we bind it, so we'll set the source attributes of the image to the pass or the file name of the picture file. And then you suppose to do this, you need a image property, and then maybe followed by, I don't know, this is catfood.png or something. Okay. And then in the way that uh, the folders is set up, this will be a little bit and complicated or a bit different. And Okay, to make this work, essentially, if you still want to just use the file name without any pass, and you need to put the pictures inside the public folder. Okay, so you can see that's public. And currently it has these two files generated for you, you don't have to worry about. And if you want to load any other pictures, you need to put it here for that to work. Okay, and uh, alternatively, and because what we are doing now, all the code we've written is the front end. Alternatively, you can use the back end to provide the files. In the sense, now the pictures is stored on the back end, not with the front end, not stay, not saved with all the view code. In that sense, in that case, you don't have to worry about the other things. And just and send the request to the backend, and which will give you the uh, image. Okay, and just because we are running out of time, we're not going to cover that. Now we're going to just move on to the an add product function. Okay, so this is what when you happen to here when you click the button here, add to cart, you want to, an event, you don't want to change the cart directly inside the product list view because the cart is an array defined here. So what you do is you send a message or trigger an event inside 
the product list component and then in the main component it will listen to that event and once it receives that it will add the product into the cart array yeah okay and so this is still inside the product list of view file so we're going to send a custom event to the parent when the add to cut button is clicked okay so what we need to do is just do this this dot emit okay and uh, so that's what we're going to do here so we just say dot and this is a slightly strange but you have used dollar sign emit okay add product so this string is basically defines what the message is and makes it different from any other messages because it have a different string okay and then the different we've seen this before the difference here is we're going to put product after the string here so what it does it will pass the product object oops misspelled which is this one here you get that will be passed to whoever listened to the message in this case it will be passed to the parent component and then the parent component then knows which product or lesson to add to the shopping cart array yeah that's all you need to do is just to add the object that you want to pass to behind the actual string for the message okay um yeah so it knows which one to add okay and once you've done this part then when this button is clicked besides showing this id here and it will also send a message but then you have to write other code which will be in the app.view which actually listen to this event and then do something okay and the first part is to import and use the product list which we already did so we import the product list and then we use that which we did here okay and then the difference is here okay so this part means i'm going to listen to this particular event okay so that string has to be the same as this string here so basically if they don't match then when this happens this emit happens it will not do anything it will waiting for that particular string of events an event with that particular string to happen and so that means um, this now listens to, to this particular event and then say when this happens we're going to run this function add to a card so this is almost similar almost like say at click so that means when you listen to click function or v on click and here we'll listen to a different type of event which is called add product when that happens we run this function at your card which is here and it's very simple essentially it's only add a thing to the product to, sorry add the product to the card and at the end so we just use push to do that okay and so now we already did this you need so that here first you need to listen to the add uh, what's this called add the product event and once this happen you say add to cart okay then definitely you need this defined as a method in your code otherwise it's not will not do anything so we're going to say add to cart here and all it does is just say this dot cart dot push and product ah so this one also needs product here i believe okay 
and then now once we have all these in places so we have both the event sending event here and then the event handling in the app dot views and that should work okay uh let me just reload oh no custom okay so product listen so simply i misspelled it somewhere app dot view um is it from product list n yeah i type the extra n there okay ah why did i set this as this hmm. okay that should be all fine and if now click now click the add to cart button and at least this number should change and because there should be more items added to the cart array so hopefully that will happen yeah so as we add more this is the output from the this one here the console log and it's still logging out which product is being added and here it will show us okay the array lens changing so you can see that's changing the more i add the more in my array okay and so that adds the so that completes the product list so the product list component itself and the change you need to be done in the app dot view and i think next we can move on to the form component exactly okay and it's still the same you need to create a new file called form dot view so we go into our components directory and we'll create a new file in this case i've called form dot view okay and so that's empty when we first started okay and it's slightly different and um, from the product list components for the form it needs data from the parent component so it needs to know the current shopping cart so it can display the existing products and to do that we'll need something called props that's the one way how the parents can pass data to the child and then you define how many different props you need and then once you have defined this and you can use this in your code and uh, they almost like define the parameters for your function in a sense uh, okay so okay so this will be the script part of the view file maybe because we have this one here first so let's just do that first and uh, the name will be called form i'll make sure i spell it correctly okay so this is a different part you declare your props and it's always an array because you have you can have more than one and in this case we only have one and the one is called cart which will be passed from our parents and the data part you should be familiar always by now okay and we haven't used this yet a name and address but you can remember we need the name and address for the on the checkout form for the user to fill out and we can add those later but for now we just created the data attributes that can be used to save the values of those later okay so that done the script part and now this is the actual template part of the same okay uh so again just to save a little bit of time i'm not gonna and typing this i'm gonna just copy paste and before that i'll explain so we'll you need a div because in the template you cannot have multiple root elements that's why we have this div here otherwise it's shown error and it shows the heading which is check out and then another subheading shows added the products then you use the v4 to loop through everything in the card so this is the card we define here as the props once you define you can just use as say name or address or any other data attributes 
So say for every product in the cart, and you have, you display the product ID, or you can display way more than that. You can say the names, the ID, or something else. And then together, you would have this remove button. So it allows you to remove that from the cart. Okay, and then after this, which is the list, or showing the shopping cart, or showing what is in shopping cart, you have this part. And what it does is shows the input forms, allow the users to add in, the, enter the name and address. Okay, and this is the label or the text just before the input. And then this is the actual message. In here, we're using B model to link the input with the name field. So name, if you remember, is defined here as one of the data attributes. This is exactly the same, and but we use that to enter address and link that with address property in our data. And finally, we have a submit button. So again, we will need actually an event handler here. Basically, when at click, this button, something should happen. For example, actually call the backend, call the rest of the service and using the post, the put and post message to update the database, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but for now, we'll just do the template. And uh, yeah, so that should work. Again, so this is more or less all we need for the Uh, uh, for the disk and component, and it's still not quite finished yet, for example, and for this button here, what we need to do is when this button is clicked, we want to remove a product from the shopping cart and but then that card again should is in the parent component, so that should not be changed here. So instead of change, we're going to send a event. This time will be a different event because it's a different type of string. And the parent will listen to that event and then respond to that by removing that particular product from the shopping cart. Oh, uh, so we're skipping. Let me see if I can. So if let's say we will button when it's clicked and we'll run a method called uh, remove product. And then we'll have to define this one here. And we'll do a method section. And then I have remove product, product. Okay, I need to add the product here. So that will pass the product that's going to be removed. Oh, and for here, then this going to emit an event and let's just call remove product, but also including the product itself. So allow that to be removed. Okay. Uh, let me see if I miss anything. Okay, we're not doing any console log. That's fine because that's not required. Okay, that's pretty much everything you need. And for the form component, it's very similar. The only difference is now it uses the props. Okay, and back to this particular event. So in the main app dot view, then you need to import the form now. So we need to use the other. And um, so I'm gonna do import form from 
slash components slash yeah form dot view okay that's where we will get the file i'll put the semicolon at the end even if it's not necessary okay and then for the components now we have a second one besides the products I also have form now uh, in this case i call it checkout and which shouldn't really matter and just use the consistent one then you add this to the template okay so hmm okay so and uh, there's a little bit so for now we're going to just add that to the how do i say to the same page and because the actual logic itself is we only display either product list and all the checkout okay i'll just call this checkout just to make it consistent no okay okay and uh, for now we're going to just add that to the page directly and right under the product list and actually in the code we want to decide which one to show it depends on when the user clicks the button and you show one of these but for now we're going to just put it there so we're going to do a form okay so that's all it needs to add a form so or add the form components to your page. Okay. And then if you remember in the form and where to find it, it has a props, right? So that's where you need to pass some value to the component when you call it. So to do this, we need to use this. And you see here, you bind the card. So the first card is the name of the props. It almost works like a property of HTML element. So you bind that props to something we have here already, and which is this cart array. Okay, so that's what this is. Okay, and so this part and um, would bind the cart array to the cart props in the form okay and then you can use vf to change and between which component is displayed currently both is displayed and you can set a value for example you can have a data, something called show card, and then say if v if show card, and you show the card, but hide the product list, and then you buy change the value of show card using the and this button here. Okay, and for now we're gonna just keep that one here, and uh, you should has something like this as well which listen to the events emitted by the form which were called the remove product and they were responded by remove the items from the shopping cart but we don't have time to do that now okay so that's what happens here now and um, we only has one product when we click this this product will be added to the shopping cart which should appear here and this number should change as well okay and currently and um, in the form we only showing the where is it in the template we only showing the product id okay and but you can display more information i'll just add a few more oops ah yeah i'm um, um, so they don't really like it because the key is one zero zero one it's the same so i think you need to use index eh? because i tried this as well and it removed this error um using index where 
I think um uh, I think in um div v four where it says product in car um I think if you do a comma or index and then two brackets. Sorry, in in this file. No, line twenty in line twenty three you can try product. Uh, yeah. where it says product for a comma next to it. Line twenty three. You mean here? Um, no, no, first um, where it says V4, so you do a bracket, product, and then index, and then close bracket. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then in the key, put the index. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. Oh, it doesn't like it. No, you have to put, go to um, where it says, um, like, mm -hmm. um, not the first one, the second parameter should be index. A second parameter? Yeah, so it should be product and then index, I think. Uh, let's try. We still say, ah, oh, okay. So we changed. Okay. Um, okay. Let's try. Okay, and so much happier. And um, yeah, so yeah, the index here is another property or the default property of the card, which is the index of the element in the array. Ah, no, that can't be true. But at least every time you get different key. So because previously I'm using the product.id as the key, then when, because the, all the items are of the same type, and so let's have this error message here. Because later on, if you want to remove an item by ID, and you will not be able to tell which one is which. And okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. So that's kind of catch up what we did last week. So we showed you how to build a very simple version of the pastor <clears throat> using the and single file components. So we had the root component, which is app.view, and which will more or less use the um, code from the default template, add a few other things to it. And then we created two new components, the form and the and product list. So one is to show the list of products. And so even though we only have one here, the other one shows the form, which is the checkout part and it shows what you added and some forms people can enter later on and to submit. And okay, let me see how we are doing in terms of time. Wow. Okay, so anyway, so this part is quite important for the uh, next group work because that's something you will need to do, something very similar. So I think it's important to cover it here. Now we can move on to next week, which is what we suppose covered this week. Um, and then so, this is the, yeah. Um, so for the, you know, the group coursework part, the components part, when when we do it with the views ELI, does that, does that work on the GitHub as well? No, it doesn't. When, okay, so we just need yeah. to, Another so, copy of yeah. So this so. file, uh, yeah, for example, form dot view itself, and you cannot upload onto GitHub Pages because it does not know how to run and open a form dot view file. So what you're yeah. seeing here is already converted into from form dot view into HTML and JavaScript, which the browser can understand. So yeah. I think. You will need to um, output the not the source. Ah, it's not here. And usually that would be a file. And okay, so maybe you need some extra command. It will out to well generate a set of files, which you can then use, upload to GitHub pages. Um, so, so I've, you know, the first part of coursework one, uh, 
group coursework, PWA. I've put that on GitHub. Yeah. That's done. For yeah. this bit, uh, do I make another copy, right? I don't use the one for uh, the one which is on GitHub. I use another, I make another copy of this and make it into components. Ah. Will that be all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be fine. That'll be fine if oh, we just use oh. it as a copy. Mm. Oh. Okay, no, oh, that might be an issue. Yeah. And um, anyway, let's let's move on to the next part, and which is about the native script view, a native script, and so and this is actually we we'll kind of move on from the component or the view for, view component part now move move on to actually writing code that's run natively on the phones so so far we all run is html javascript and css and you can run this on the phone but it's just run in the browser really and when you're using native scripts what you created will be actually run just as say, a native app <clears throat> Okay, and we're going to quickly cover what is native script and what is native script view. Okay, and uh, what we may have to skip this quite quickly in terms of different parts and of the native script and how these different parts work together. And finally, is working with native script with its playground, and it's an online editor which allows you to try out native script quite quickly. <clears throat> um, just let me check in the time. Okay, and um, yeah, we still got about half an hour. Let's see how much we can be able to cover. Okay, and native script is a framework, allows you to build iOS and Android applications and uh, with just say JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. So it's cross-platform and native. So cross-platform means you can run this on Android or iOS, and it's native in the sense the code will not be run in a web browser. It will run just as any other native apps. Okay, and then it's free to use, and you can use together with other frameworks such as Vue.js. So this is why you have native script view, and it also has native script Angular, for example, it allows you to use with Angular or just plain native script or vanilla native script without um, including working with any uh, particularly um, framework. Okay, and uh, I already mentioned you can also use this with Angular, so you can have native script Angular. Uh, let me close this one and this one on. Okay. Okay. And so just do a comparison between the app created by native script and those created with view for PWA. So progressive web apps. And so both are cross-platform, you can run on any phone. And the difference will be, and the native script will use native UI components. So those ones designed by Android or iOS, whereas PWA use browser component. For example, that will be an HTML button instead of say an Android button or iOS button. Then you have these elements like headings and paragraphs, etc which don't necessarily exist in the native UI elements for the phones. Okay. And as a result, you can use things which is not available in the browser yet. And for example, and there's some examples allows you to use an augmented reality capability on iOS. And uh, because, so that these are like a, a native API on the OS, and you can only use it this way. 
whereas you can't really do that using PWA. Okay, and native script is also run a little bit faster, and but the difference is difficult. It's very difficult. It's quite small, difficult to tell if you just run simple apps, unless, for example, you run something quite computationally expensive, like, say, uh, games with lots of graphics. Okay, and then the native script apps does not run on the browser and has to be installed from an app store or Google Play, whereas PWA can be installed with a link. So we already seen this, say you can host your PWA on GitHub pages and you give anyone the URL to the GitHub pages and then they can install it as an app on their phone. And whereas you can't do this with native script apps because these are native apps, so it has to be distributed from some store, either Google Play or App Store or some other stores, and to install from there. So you can't just share with them, give them a link. Um, okay. Um, this is some diagrams in terms of how the native script works. Uh, just because of the time, we're not going to spend, we're going to just skip through this quite quickly. And in for native script, you still use CSS for formatting, JavaScript for the logic, which is why you can still use Vue. And it's also for the native UI elements, you'd have to use something like XML. But essentially, it just means some different uh, names or elements. That's all. We'll see later. So the XML is very similar to the HTML for web apps or PWA, and it's just called different names and the way it works is slightly different. Okay, and so that's what, what I meant. So in the HTML, you would have body, button, label, and div. And then in the actual native script, and you would not have this body element. Instead, you had the XML element, called the page and the button is still called the button, but the way it works is a little bit different and same for the label. So the label has the same kind of name as this element, but the way it works is different. So the label is used for all text, including headings and paragraphs. And finally, div. And the most similar one is called the stack layout, which allows you to group elements together. So one of the main tasks when you're using the native script is to change your template of the view single file component from these HTML elements into these native script elements. Okay, <clears throat> so this is something, a very, very simple example of what the code might look like if you wrote that in native script. And so we start with page, and we said it's kind of like the body in the HTML, and then you stack layout. So actually, this is decides the layout of different elements inside. Stack layout means one or stack on top of another. <clears throat> and then inside the stack, so this is like the inside div, you can have text. And we said you can't use headings or paragraphs. And usually you just use label. And also the other thing a bit different here is say the label, you don't put the actual text in between the starting and the closing X. You usually use a property called text to set the text of the label. Okay, and so this is similar and you still have the opening closing text, or sometimes you can have just one tag with this with this slash and angle bracket at the end to close it. So then you don't need a closing tag. <coughs> <coughs> so we already covered this part. So the page element is almost like the body for the HTML. So the stack layout, as I said, the row is almost like a div. But here, 
and it's used also used to um, group elements inside. And also there's something a little bit different because for HTML and how the elements are laid out is not decided using an, another element like stack layout. Usually it's designed using CSS. Whereas and in this case, you can have your stack layout. And there's some other layout like grid layout, which is similar to CSS grid. Okay, and then you can have label used to display text. Okay, and this is like the more detailed view of how native script works. Um, this is your code, application code. And this is if you use any framework, for example, we're going to use Vue, you can use Angular or none of this, just say plain, plain JavaScript. And then here is the native script is called the core modules, including the UI elements like the page and the stack layout, the label, those we've seen before are in here. And you can also extend those using called native script plugins. And this allows you to add extra things, which is not in the native script core modules. And then all these kind of converted into some code which can run natively on either Android or iOS using the native script runtime. Okay, and the finally, we have the CRI, which we're actually going to use in quite a bit later on. And this is allows for development. So it allows you to test. And because and for this, you either have to run the code in the simulator or um, on your phone using something called the playground. And that also needs to be achieved using native script and CRI. So you can either run in a simulator which runs on your phone or you run actual on your phone using playground. Okay, uh, for this part, we're probably just going to skip. You can have a look of the different um, modules you have in different blocks. Okay, and then to run, to create an app using native script, and you can write your code in editor like a VS Studio code. And then you run the code locally in an Android or iOS, iOS simulator. So you can see here, this is an Android simulator and this is an iOS simulator. Okay. And this will require setting up the local development environment, which can be a little bit tricky. And so for example, it's not possible to set up an iOS simulator on Windows because it requires Xcode, which only is available on Mac computers. And to run the Android simulator, you have to install lots of things. For example, Android SDK, which itself requires Java and other things. Okay, so it can be a bit tricky. Okay, and the other option will be to run the code on your phone directly. And to do that, there are two options. And the first thing you can write actually your code online using the native script view playground. So this is what it looks like. And it's an, it's an online editor and which you can write the code just as you would write the code in Visual Studio code. And then you can click preview and it will then load the convert the code into something you can run on your phone. And then you can view it on your phone using a native script view uh, app on your phone. So you code online and similar to the video studio code, and then you run on your phone. And there are two apps you need to install to get this to work. Okay. And so again, a quick comparison between run the app locally in a simulator or run it through the playground. Okay, so the playground does not allow, does not require 
any setting up because it's running the browser. So as you open the browser, you can run it. You don't need to install anything locally. So we're going to use program mostly in the lecture because we had quite a bit of problem trying to set up a local and developer environment. It just depend because and people different configurations, different machines. Okay. And the downside of using Playground is some of the features are not available and in the Playground. Whereas if you do local div, you have all the features available. And Playground only supports a subset of all the features available. But everything we needed for the coursework is available in the Playground. We only look using very basic things, nothing fancy or advanced. So they are all available in Playground. And if you really want to, you can use local div or simulator for your coursework because code wise, it will be very similar if it's not identical. But we will not cover and to support this. For example, if you had a problem setting up your local simulation environment, we will not support that part. Okay, and now we're going to have a quick look of the um, playground itself. And so because it's online and all you need to do is just go to this URL and then you are there. So this is what it looks like. And then you can choose one of these frameworks to use with. So it's because besides Angular and Vue, now you can use either plain TypeScript or JavaScript and without any framework or React, which is another popular one framework or Svelte or something like that. It's another popular one. This is the most recent one. Uh, it's newer, even than it's newer than everything else here. So we're going to pick a view and it will tell you to download this app. Okay. And then you need to run that app on your phone and to scan this QR code. And then it will automatically run whatever code you written in the online editor. Okay. Let's go back to the here. Okay. So and um, okay. And before that, we're gonna just have a look of the playground itself. I'm going to zoom in a bit on here. And is the text big enough to read now? Or even bigger? This is fine, sir. OK. OK, just checking how much time we still have. And very quickly, uh, in terms of, uh, that's the old one. We don't need this either now. And so that's what it looked like. So this is the folder and files similar you would have on the computer. This is the UI component. So that's one of the useful features of the online editor, which allows you to drag drop these features from here onto your code. And this is your main code, just like we see the code where you write and edit the code. Actually, this is using something very similar to we see the code in the sense, for example, those short keyboard shortcuts in VS code, it might easy, and it still works here. And finally, you have a console, and this is displayed an error message, but also if you connect to your phone, it will be shown here as well. Uh, okay. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And then to see the app on your phone running you need to install the app and you can either just google and native script view playground and you should see that from either google or iphone also say google play or app shop okay and so obviously i have installed that already and uh, What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you on, on my phone, and hopefully you can see that screen. Where's my Zoom? Yeah. 
you. I will join the meeting. Okay, and I need the meeting ID and give me a minute. Let me. Uh, where is John? The Zoom meeting, the meeting ID will be 340 Okay. Join. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. So you can see two of me now in the Zoom meeting and one from the phone, one from the laptop. And uh, let me share the screen. Okay, and can you see my phone now? Phone screen on the... Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And so this will be the app that you will need to install and call the playground. And that's the second one. Oh, sorry, the first one on the second row. And if I click on that, it has interface like this. And you click scan QR code. Okay, it turns to camera. So what I need to do now is I need to scan the QR code generated and by the online playground editor. Okay, and then you can see my phone now showing that's exactly what's being um, shown. Uh, that's the result this app created currently the default code in the online playground. And then you can make changes in the online playground, then the phone will change as well. So for example, um, if I change some text, say, uh, see, ST3145, uh, can you still see my computer screen at all or? We're on your mobile screen, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit tricky and let's see how we, how do I switch those two easily? Let me. Okay. So now we switch back to the my and computer screen. So this is still tro uh, slightly troublesome when we try to do this uh, over Zoom. But for you, you'll be able to switch between the two devices quite easily when you're actually coding. And so now I make some small changes. I made the title of the action bar into three and CST3145. And before it was called home. And I just changed that to this. And then I save. And it will show. Okay. Recompile the code. And uh, you can click preview, which is this button. It will ask you to log in. You could. Uh, uh. So if I come back here, oh, it doesn't change. Uh, let me reopen the preview app. Uh, okay. And uh, so let me switch back to my phone. So this is a little bit. Not this one. Um, okay. And so if you look back and on my phone now, you can see and um, the text on the top left corner now changed to CST3145. Yeah. 
So this is like the general workflow. So you make changes in the online code, uh, sorry, in the online editor, and you use the preview button, and then they will refresh the apps on your phone and you can see the changes actually. So basically this way you run your code as a native app on the phone. You don't have to go through say a Play Store or iOS apps. So a Google Play and all app store. Okay. Um, so and the app will run on native script app on the phone, right? That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And let me switch back to my computer. Okay. We still have a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, so something you might have to use quite a few times is and um, you click the preview button here too. And sometimes the phone might get disconnected because, for example, it always shut automatically shut the screen. And you might need to click this QR code button and it allows you to rescan the QR code with the same app before and we'll re-step the connection. Uh, yeah, actually, I think it stops it. Sharing already. Uh, yeah. So if you connect it with the phone, and um, here the device should show up the phone that you connected onto. Uh, let me reconnect this. Currently, there's nothing. And if I click the QR code and scan this QR code again, well, it didn't show up here. Uh, okay, now. Yeah, and so now you can see here, it shows that's the phone get connected now. That's Huawei P30, model Android number, preview app version. So that's a second app, which is called a preview app, which will be automatically run by the native, by the playground app. And if you haven't installed that, the playground app would ask you to the first time. And every time after that, it will automatically use this to display. Okay, and that's kind of workflow using the playground. Okay, yeah, as I said, um, you will be able to see which phone you connected and you will just see the app itself. Currently, there's nothing fancy. The app itself just have some paragraphs of text and which is what all those code is about. Okay, and our goal later is to convert the pet shot again, this time into a native script app, but we're not going to do that this week. Yes, this week we're just to set up the whole thing and then we can start it from next week. We have two weeks to do this and again a refactoring. Okay. And for now, we're going to just have a look of the files, which is automatically generated for you in the playground. And the first thing is the root file. So the one is showing here is hello world.view. And in the sense, it's very similar to the template you generated in the view CRI. And if you remember uh, here, and by default, it will have this hello world of view generated by the CRI. It's very similar here. But the content itself is a bit different. And you can see, um, again, I can use the same as the wrapping, slightly not as nice. And it just have some labels, which is really line of text we've seen before. But also we have these files called app.cs, that defines like the CSS formatting for the app. And currently it's using the core and the default ones. So these are predefined themes by native script. So that's how your app would look like. And if you want to change anything, you can add them here, which should affect everything in the app. And for example, it says for dot button, the font size should be 18, that's one of them. Okay, 
and then there's the app.js file and that's the main file and you don't really have to do anything about it so it's more or less just leave it as is okay and oh you might have to uh, so the app.js file is almost like the app.view we have here so for example if you have any components you want to use you have to import and here we importing app.view and here we're doing the app.js file we don't have to import those there and the actual template later on we want to use it say we have this template and we use the two imported components that's also done here it has a template part and it imported a component called hello world from components slash hello world and then once you register the component here which is the same as you before and you can use that in the template so you say hello world the frame is something you have to do it's like the body or page it's just to include everything inside so all these files app.js yep. and all the other ones so when you started playground on your pc and then you click on view it came automatically right they've all generated yeah, automatically right. yeah all right so this is what i just did so i just and the, uh, how do i say the start screen you choose which one you want or which flavor of native script you want i choose the native script view and it gives you this and you can also actually just use these new button here and you give yourself the same options and you can choose native script with angular and what do you see here is what generated by native script plot view.js you can choose some other uh, options and this says and react in the svelte our uh, community efforts so it's not officially done by the native script but it's possible to use Okay, and then we can have a quick look of the hello world.view file. And nothing too interesting, but you can see you have the template, just like the single file component. But inside, 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 have div, you would have page with a specific element from native script, and then have action bar, which is the top line of text at the top. And then you use a scroll view and use a stack layout. And we said this is almost like use div to group things together. And you have some and labels. And then we said that the text you get displayed is set as a text property. We're not and putting everything here. So it's easier to see here in the hello world view. And you had these three labels and you have these text okay so that's why you see three paragraph of text in the actual app and okay uh so we we are running out of time now so i guess we'll stop there and the next week we'll continue from here and to have a closer look of the hello world.view file, which is a single file component, but using the different uh, native script elements instead of the HTML element inside. Okay, and we'll stop there now.